Section 2.5 deals with finding roots that are both real and imaginary. Here we have a polynomial function, 2x to the 4th plus 8x squared minus 7. Because the degree of this function is 4, we know that it has 4 roots. And since it has four roots, it also has four linear factors. A linear factor is of the form x plus or minus some number. Now, the number can be a real number or a complex number. So for this particular function, there would be four of them. That would be x plus or minus some number, x plus or minus another number, depending on what those values are. Now, if one of these, some of these were the same, remember, then you could write it as x plus or minus, and then some exponent up here. If there were two the same, you could put it to the squared. Now, we also know from previous sections that f of x has no sign change there, one sign change there, So there is one sign change, which means there is one positive real root, which also means there's one real factor. It would be x minus some value. Then we also know that if we substitute a negative x in, we put a negative x in here. That's going to stay the same as 2x to the fourth. because a negative to the fourth is still positive. If you substitute a negative x in here, that is going to go to a positive x squared times 8 is still plus 8x squared. And if you can't put a negative x into that, so then it's just minus 7 still. So we still have one sign change. And so, since there is one sign change, there is one negative real root. Now that yields us two roots in all. We know that this has four total. So then, because there's only one positive and there's only one negative, there have to be two complex roots as well. something with an imaginary number. <laughs> and
an imaginary roots remember can take on the form say something like 2i and negative 2i or 3 plus 5i and 3 minus 5i. And if you were going to write the linear factors for them, for 2i and the negative 2i, that would be x minus 2i and x plus 2i. For 3 plus 5i, if you were going to write the linear factors, it would be x minus 3 minus 5i. That would be for this one and x minus 3 plus 5i. Now, the nice thing about complex roots, if 2 plus 3i is a root, then 2 minus 3i is also a root. because complex roots must occur in pairs if all of the coefficients are real numbers. And when they occur in pairs, those pairs are called conjugates. If you have a 2 plus a 3i, you have a 2 minus a 3i. If you have 6i as one root, then there has to be a negative 6i. If there's a negative 5 plus 4i as a root, then there also has to be a negative 5 minus 4i. They always occur in pairs. Now, looking at this example here, From this factored polynomial, we know that there is a root at 2. And here there is a root at a negative 4. This root occurs three times. So if we were to sketch a graph of this, we know at 2, it crosses and at a negative 4 it crosses. It also has a y-intercept by putting a 0 into both of those two places you can find the y-intercept. 0 minus 2 is a negative 2 and 0 plus 4 is 4 and 4 to the third is 64 times a negative 2 equals a negative 128. So then we know way down at a negative 128, it crosses. Since this has a degree of 1 and this has a degree of 3, it's a fourth degree polynomial. There's a leading coefficient of 1, so therefore both ends are up. So who knows what it does as far as turns are concerned. It can only have three at the most. Could look like that. But we do know that it crosses at these two places on the x-axis because of the factorization. And it crosses at this point on the y-axis because substituting zero in gets us that value when we evaluate it. If you want to change this to standard form, you would have to write it out completely x minus 2, and then 3 of the x plus 4s. And then do the multiplication for it. Multiplying these two together first would get you x squared plus 2x minus 8. Multiplying these two together would get you x squared plus 8x plus 16 because you're doing that 
and here you are doing this. Now then multiplying these together, x squared times everything over here, 2x to the fourth, plus 8x to the third, plus 16x squared. Then multiplying 2x by everything would be plus 2x to the third, plus 16x squared, plus 32x. And multiplying everything by a negative 8 would be a negative 8x squared minus 64x minus 128. Adding it all up and combining like terms would get you a polynomial of x to the fourth plus 10x to the third. plus 24x squared, minus 32x, minus 128. And if you look at this polynomial function, the function has only one sign change from here to there, so there's only one positive real root, which is right there. It occurs three times, but still it's only one root. All right, looking at another example. This here is a 10th degree polynomial. And the roots in this case would be for this one, zero, that one, two, and that one, negative four. Sketching a graph of this. We know it crosses at 0, positive 2, and a negative 4. Since it's a tenth degree, both ends go up. And if you substitute 0 into this, that's 4 and 4 cubed is 64. That's 2 and 2 squared is 4. And that's 0 and 0 times all that's 0, so it crosses the y-axis at 0. And so our polynomial does something like this. Perhaps. Remember, it has to pass through 0 because it's to the 5th power. It's odd. It has to touch at 2 because that's even. And it has to pass through at a negative 4 because it's also odd. <laughs> and if you were to multiply that all out, you could get the polynomial in standard form. We aren't going to do that at this point in time, but you probably will have to at the, in the assignment. It's no different just writing x minus 2 twice, x plus 4 three times, multiplying all that out, and then at the end I would multiply by x to the fifth. Now looking at another example, this particular polynomial function if we look at it, f of x has no sign changes. Therefore, no positive roots. If we then go to f negative x, it would be a negative x to the fourth plus 10 times a negative x squared plus 21. It's not going to change that, it's not going to change this, and the 21 still stays there. 
which means still no sign changes. And therefore, no negative ruts. Which means that it has four complex ruts. And it can never cross the x-axis. It does cross at 21, way up here, because that's what this is. And if you substitute 0 in, you get 21. So it does, could be something like this. Or possibly even this. Something along those lines. Now, how do you find the four complex roots? Well, here's where you'd end up having to factor. If you can, or use the quadratic formula of some way. Since this, since first off, if this is 4 and this is 2 and there's only 3 terms, we can factor it. And we just have to figure out what are the factors of 21 that get us 10. They are 7 and 3. And so then we can write x squared plus 7 and x squared plus 3. And now from this, once you have it in factor form, you know then that x squared equals a negative 7, and x squared equals negative 3. Taking the square root of a negative 7 would get you x equals plus and minus the square root of 7i, and taking the square root of a negative 3 would get you x equals plus and minus the square root of 3i. And now we have our four roots. If you were going to write these as linear factors, you would write x minus the square root of 7i, x plus the square root of 7i, x minus the square root of 3i, and x plus the square root of 3i. And that is everything from section 2.5. Enjoy the homework.